The driver of a freight train requested an all trains block from the network control officer so that the assistant driver could safely unstow the train. About an hour after the implementation of the block, the network controller unsuccessfully attempted to contact the train driver via radio to determine if the block was still required. This was overheard by the operations coordinator located at the depot, who then successfully contacted the train driver by phone and asked if the block was still required. The train driver explained that the block was in place for the assistant driver who was assisting with the unstowing of the train. Shortly afterwards, the assistant driver entered the depot and was asked directly by the operations coordinator if the block was still required. The assistant driver said he believed the block would not be needed as he should be able to assist in the unstowing of the train from the other side of the tracks. The operations coordinator then informed the network controller that the block could be removed. The network controller proceeded to remove the block but failed to advise the train driver or assistant driver. Upon carrying out the required safety tests, the assistant driver realised that he in fact would need to access the unprotected side of the tracks to release handbrakes. He contacted the train driver to check if the block was still in place. The train driver, who had not been privy to any of the other communications and had not himself requested the block be removed, informed the assistant driver that the block was still in place. As the assistant driver was releasing handbrakes along the unprotected side of the tracks, another train began travelling towards him from the opposite direction. Upon hearing the air horns, the assistant driver managed to run to safety. This incident illustrates the importance of sufficient and unambiguous protocols when it comes to safety critical communications and that these protocols be followed to avoid either misinterpretation or a breakdown in communications. Investigations into this incident found that the relevant section of the safety management system did not provide sufficient guidance on who was responsible for requesting an all trains block to be implemented or removed, or the process for the implementation and removal for an all trains block. The investigation also determined that rail safety workers had not received any training in relation to the relevant standard. The investigation further found that the operations coordinator, by informing the network controller that the block could be removed without the train driver's or assistant driver's knowledge, failed to take reasonable care. The operations coordinator also failed to ensure all instructions were correctly sent, received and understood when communicating between the train driver and the assistant driver. Similarly, by removing the block without confirmation from the train driver that the block was no longer required, the network controller also failed to take reasonable care. Remember, at all times, safety critical information must be received and understood between the affected parties.